They're pretty reprehensible people who never seem to learn their lesson. I think you truly resist change. No, it's not. And you're already saying no. Well, you're dead wrong. They sort of make it on their own, which is really the story of this show. There's a very strong connection between music and comedy. There should be a special category of award for shows that are consistently funny for an unusual amount of time. So when are we going back to work, by the way? On TV, he plays a dim-witted... He's listening, he's not understanding. Yeah, he doesn't even, like, get us, man. It's... We're talking about you! Hyperactive... <laughs> borderline psychotic man-child. Charlie's looking right at me. Stop it! Dude, stop it! An individual who, without the help of arguably the worst friends imaginable... Is this thing loaded? It can be. ...would be left hopeless and alone. But there's a reason this show has lasted 16 seasons and counting. Little rise, I'm gonna kick a little ass. And it's partially thanks to the unparalleled genius that is Charlie Day. How absurd did it get? We're both men of the law, you know? Oh! Shut up, Pam! You shut up, you can't read! Everyone's always telling me what to do all the time! Fine, I'll do the dishes! Settle, settle down. You're ordering milk steak and jelly beans? You told me I have high voice? Are you kidding me? What are some of your likes? Uh, ghouls. Son of a can't do backflips. You don't know karate. Rock flag and eagle. I mean, it was pretty, pretty absurd. It's not often you see an actor who so effortlessly portrays the everyman. Why do you think you're weird? Mm, it was weird, I guess. An underdog who happens to be hiding an incredible gift. The talent of an expert musician and the improv skills of a comedy great. Are you going to bang the, uh... Yeah, yeah. Hey. <laughs> That's okay. But Charlie is the product of tremendous effort and time. Years spent honing his craft under the guidance of a family all extensively trained in the creative arts. Aren't your parents uh, professionals? They both have their PhDs in musicology, as does my sister. Although Charlie had the chops for creative pursuit, he didn't necessarily have the incentive. They didn't have any money, so I was, <laughs> I was like, this is, no, music's not for me. Charlie was most certainly multi-talented, but the problem was, so were plenty of others. I was always coming close. I was testing for a lot of TV shows. A man in the prime of his youth in competition with thousands. And at a height of 5'7", he wasn't your typical leading man. Always be, to be the best friend, never to be the guy. Yeah, yeah. This often made finding consistent work extremely difficult. If he wanted to conquer what seemed like insurmountable odds, he'd have to create a little bit of his own luck. This would come in the form of his two friends, Glenn Howerton and Rob McElhinney. We were working and it was around then that Robin Glenn and I were thinking why wait why not just shoot something ourselves on essentially no budget they'd create the pilot for it's always sunny but there was one glaring issue there was no TikTok to just sort of throw it away on YouTube I think had was just kind of coming onto the scene they had the product but no way to shop it around the more traditional methods of promotion would prove useless and we waited forever for someone to watch it nobody watched it yet through a little bit of persistence they'd find the voice they were looking for. And while we were waiting, we shot a third episode. And that third episode started to get pretty good. We started to find our voice and our timing. And we had an offer from FX. No, only briefly. They said, we'll give you seven episodes. We did seven. And then they were like, okay, we're going to cancel the show unless you can get a big name attached. They needed to find a bigger name. One with tremendous star power. Who better than Danny DeVito? I unzip me. It's all coming back. It's everything. Frank was a shrewd, morally bankrupt businessman who only cared about his next dollar and getting laid. Why would you say that she's dead? That's a business tactic. You drop the bomb, then you soften the blow. You never tried this? Charlie, while certainly at times unstable, How could you do that? had a childlike view of the world that was ripe for Frank's manipulation. We work very well together, okay? We're gruesome do some. The show would pair this dysfunctional duo to hilarious results. It is a good movie, Charlie. You wanna go back and watch it? With all my heart. DeVito, with a resume that speaks for itself, had almost no difficulty playing off of Day's improv. Well, if I was hungry and the cat food was there, I'd eat it. And if you If I couldn't sleep, go to sleep, you would. I would eat the cat eat food the cat and go to sleep. Because it might make you go to sleep. Given the fact that they've shared similar experiences dealing with the superficial standards of Hollywood, this duo's quest for belonging and friendship was that much more believable. Good night. Frank. Good night, Charlie. But while DeVito's addition was certainly a massive contribution, it's only a piece of the puzzle. Charlie Day has one of the most recognizable voices in all of television. Why is your voice so high? My voice is high. I'm the one with the normal voice. You're the one with the high voice, dude. Charlie Kelly is manic, naive, and given his childlike wonder. How come Max the only one who gets to push the button on the walkie? 
Let me get back to you on that. Often vulnerable. You're not an artist, dude. You're drawing with chalk. No, I'm drawing with marker and like pen and stuff. I'm just eating the chalk. Day tends to infuse his character's lines with a more rapid, energetic pace. <laughs> <laughs> this vocal style pairs in harmony with what seems like effortlessly effective physical comedy. Could you tell the lady how you're... Don't do that. Charlie has no difficulty making use of the entire room. Pepe Sylvia, Pepe Sylvia, I look in the mail with well, this whole box is Pepe Sylvia! Whether he's flailing his arms during a manic episode or emphasizing certain words. How about your favorite food? What would that be? Oh, milk steak. Hmm. Mm. What? He knows exactly how to captivate an audience. Oh, that felt good. Was that sexy? That's That felt great. sexy. We'll, we'll Photoshop it. Viewers want quotable moments. Just I'm going to put steak. steak and then Don't that put steak. Put milk steak. She'll know what it is. No, she won't know what it is, She'll Charlie. Know Nobody what knows is. what that is. And memorable performances. To an invention. Is he doing an accent? Yeah. Charlie Kelly, with Day in the driver's seat, delivers them in abundance. Have you been drinking paint? No. Let me see your tongue. But give this man an instrument and his talent becomes even more obvious. It's the place I go where the beer is cheap and the lights are low, it's Patty's Pub. Charlie's improv abilities are never more clear than when he's playing the piano or ripping the harmonica. But his range isn't limited to what's on screen. Charlie is a crucial part of the show's writing. It almost seems like you're on a mission to see how dumb can I make this person? Is right. that, is that I don't like writing stories that come from an outside motivation. This lack of interest in gimmicks and organic approach to the characters does incredibly well to keep the show grounded. Sometimes I feel like the pitches are just in the interest of being different. This genuine approach to creative storytelling and his ability to portray dim-witted characters has helped him find plenty of work outside of the comfort of It's Always Sunny. So my boss, who we're thinking about planning to kill, is dying in front of you and you saved his life? Well, that sounds bad when you say it like that. Yet the most genuine aspect of this individual is not his musical talent or the creative storytelling. Charlie Day does at times carry a bit of Charlie Kelly's manic, energetic delivery. <laughs> they said, you guys want to present an award there? We're like, all right, fine. We said, but Danny's out of town. They're like, nah, never mind. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. As do Glenn and Rob with their own respective characters. It used to be called soccer. I know, but they get angry, Glenn. I don't know why they get so Listen, angry. They're the one who invented the, I get the it. damn sport I, and I, called I, it I, soccer. I understand. Okay, I understand. All three are significantly amplified versions of the actor's worst traits. While Charlie Kelly is full of childlike wonder. Having uh, debilitating uh, aches and pains, it was all, all in his mind. Charlie Day, when not playing on his energy, seems to have the wisdom of an old man. It's a different human being to me. <laughs> Considering he huffs glue and eats cat food, I think it's good for me to like. He speaks in a calmer, more measured tone. Does Charlie Day have a Twitter? I do not have a Twitter. Don't care for it, Twitter. Ruining the world, Twitter is. The delivery of someone who is sure of their own talent. But it's Charlie Day Day. And doesn't need to constantly remind you that he's here for a reason. <laughs> Of hearing celebrities talk, so let's, <laughs> let's hear from the people, the man on the street. There are plenty of examples of the brilliant comedic timing and gifted musical skill set. Man. Plenty examples of the humble nature and relatability. We've been together 20 years. You've been together 20 and years. And we've been married, I think, 15? It took us two seasons to realize we could get the network to pay for an office. Perhaps we shouldn't wait until old age to give someone their flowers. Perhaps Charlie Day, with two decades of unparalleled on-screen presence. Probably the weirdest guy in the universe, you know. Deserves them right now. But life's just that way. Goodbye, Philadelphia. Goodbye, Charlie. If you're lucky, that is. I guess I'm just foolish for living in bliss. We are sunny in our way. And this will be what we're known for. Till our very last day. <laughs>